Hi, welcome to another video. I uh, hope you all had a good New Year celebration. I'm trying to think what the date is today. Uh, 9th of January. Well, uh, you remember from the previous videos, I made a frequency counter. It's good for, well, one would naught hertz up to 460 and then 460 up to 2 megs. Well, what I've set up here is a program, quick, easy program. I'll show you the code uh, in a few minutes. Uh, it's to measure pulse, uh, the pulse width of a, an incoming pulse. So for this uh, like color TFT, and you, you will see from the other videos, I've got uh, the RTCC clock. Uh, although you can calibrate them, I want to update it uh, from an MSF receiver. So I've messed about with the program, but this is going to measure pulse width. So it does, yeah, the varying pulse width doesn't matter 100 milliseconds wide, 200 or 5 milliseconds wide. This is going to to show you how wide that pulse is, focus you in. So that's running 100 hertz. So if I then show you my scope, you'll have to excuse the scope. I've uh, hit the screen, I think, or something's dropped on it. Just slow signal for demonstration. And you see the I've got the scope five milliseconds per division. So you see that's five milliseconds wide. Uh, frequency down there 100 Hertz and you see the period so obviously from where that starts to where another one starts the period is obviously double the pulse width in this case anyway so I've just turned this down to 94 Hertz for example that's still on 5 but let me wind it down you'll get the idea so 7 so that's obviously the pulse width 7 milliseconds I'll just flip you back to the scope. Hopefully you'll be able to catch both. You'll see the pulse width getting wider. So I'm at 8 milliseconds. So that's 50 hertz, 10 milliseconds. Uh, 10 milliseconds pulse width and obviously the period as I said double the pulse width so 20, cell, uh, 20 milliseconds from there to there or I'm on 5 milliseconds per division so pulse width 10 milliseconds and you see that TFT is updating nicely right slow you right down what you'll also notice in case you're not for the beginners the novice this is obviously counting in decimal I've got the capture configured to port A as well, and you'll see that's obviously counting in hexadecimal. So we've got a, well, we've got a 16 there at the moment, or was it 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128? So we've got a 16 plus a 1 plus a 2 with 19. All right, what I'll do, I'll just speed that back up, and you'll see the thing increase. Actually, I want to slow it back down, of course, to get the higher numbers. Right, 25 hertz there. So we've got pulse width measurement of 20 milliseconds. I'll change the scope now. It says 10 milliseconds per division. We've got two, two divisions. Um, I'll slow it down again. That was 25 hertz. You can obviously see with the numbers increasing, we get more and more LEDs on. So, so you've got a hexadecimal decoder as well. So that one just come on there. That's 30, yeah, that one's 32. Plus the 1 and the 2. Right, that's 10 hertz. So we've got pulse width of 50 milliseconds. And hopefully you can see in the scope as well. We've got five divisions on the scope. And for some reason it's not measuring it. Don't know why, doesn't matter. Not interested in the scope. Well, so now you might start to see this input blinking down here. Now we're lower than sort of 20 20 hertz. Well, so that's 5 hertz. So our pulse width is 100 milliseconds wide. 
Oh, and the scope's decided to measure it again. Turn it. So we're 25 milliseconds of division there. Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, hundred, hundred milliseconds, hundred milliseconds, and you see a hexadecimal counter is counting up, and obviously a decimal counter is counting up, and there's the input flashing down there. The other LEDs that are flashing are to run the TFT display. Right now we let me put that back to two what was it that's two three hertz two hertz we've got two hundred and fifty milliseconds so this is where I'm now interested because the MSF receiver we've got pulses coming in of hundred milliseconds two hundred milliseconds and certainly here in the UK five hundred millisecond pulse will give us the minute start which is so if I now slow this to one hertz you see I've got it set up, I've got one hertz going in, if I can show you in a scope. So that's on 250 milliseconds per division. I'll line it up with one of the edges, I'll accept this trigger's gone so I can't move it. You see we've got 250 milliseconds per division. Well, we've got look, one plus a half plus a half, depending on it's just now on scan and not trigger, so I can't shift it over. Take my word for it. Well, back to this. More importantly, so if you want to run an MSF clock using this, uh, the, I forgot to mention this PIC32 and uh, relevant codes for PIC32 uh, yeah, PIC micros. Sun down at one hertz. And we've got a 500 millisecond pulse, but it's obviously slow because the pulse is coming on, uh, waiting another one second and flashing back on again. And every time this code sees a 500 millisecond pulse, I was just demonstrating, we'll get the minute start. So what I'll do, disconnect this function generator, get the scope out of the way, and show you my MSF receiver. Right, there we go. Hopefully you get that in the picture. This is a MSF receiver bought from oh, PB Electronics, either on eBay or go direct to their website. Uh, MSF receiver, you see flashing once a second. You see the scope and now, actually you can see a big pulse there. You get one and two, 100 and 200 millisecond pulses. I don't know if you can actually see the TFT while all that's going on, but you don't need to see the rest anymore, do you really? So if I zoom you into the TFT, I'll bet to turn the light off because it upsets the MSF receiver. Right, you see the code I'm going to show you in a couple of seconds. This is, I've actually got it set measuring uh, rising edges and falling edges, but rising edges first. So you might see, before it gives us the final result, it's flicking up at 800, so that's the long interval between each rising and falling edge. But this final result is giving me the pulse width. You see it's sort of 700 there, but, but you get the general idea. It's got 200, 100, and you see the minute start, so it's just picked up a pulse of more than, or more or equal to 500 milliseconds. Right, this is a uh, data sheet for the, this is the PIC32 I'm using, uh, the 575 256 megs uh, RAM memory. Uh, where are we? RTCC is a real time clock you pull out there and uh, capture one, RD8, section 50, input capture. Have a read of that. Just the initial configuration for the TFT. Just making sure I get you in. 
So same as all the airs. I'm just using the Easy Pick version 7, so if you've got the, that, that board, all of this will have been done for you. Uh, obviously the touch screen bits. So this is the um, Capture Interrupt. You can see there I'm turning the timer on when the interrupt occurs. So timer 2 uh, and that's the prescaler which I believe 256 divided by 256 but don't quote me. Well, capture 1 is IC1 buffer. Uh, in this example it's not overflowing. Once you've captured it clear the capture either like that or like that. Right, this is enabling the interrupts. You can see enable interrupts that's the configuration for the IC1 capture. Uh, I forget it's been so many months since I've done it now. Uh, is it um, global or priorities and sub priorities? There, that's turning the IC1 on bit on, and there's the IC1 configuration. I'll put it in binary. You can obviously convert it to hexadecimal if you want, but there's bit 15 turns it on. Bit nine there tells us we want the we want to configure it for the rising and falling edges, depending on how I've got it configured here in the last three bits. These this one one zero is every edge, but uh, rising edge first. Uh, I forgot to show you that bit on the data sheet. That's just the rising edge. And then, like, for example, bit seven there, which this is remmed out with those two lines. Bit seven there tells us we want the counter 2 as our counter and not counter 3. So that's the initialization there for the screen. Initial, in, initialization for the MTU. All pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, it's, this is the bit there that is D dot B8 equals 1. So that's the IC1 input which is D11 IC4 input if you want it. I've got port A set up there just so the LEDs turn on and off with the capture. So that's initialize MCU, that's the touch panel which isn't running at the moment. Untied int for the capture, and that's to show you the result on the screen, and that's the main. Hopefully, you can see all this. So that's just the heading I've got. At the top of the clock, you might might remember, and then this is the while one loop. This is all it's doing. So, capture one equals capture one or cap one divided by thirty nine. Let me quickly show you. So, in this instance, it's pick thirty two running at eighty megs. But let me scroll down here. PLL input divider. So, phase lock loop input divider divided by two. Got multiplier running by 20, system clock output clock divider divided by 1. But the important bit to slow everything down for this slow incoming pulse, the peripheral clock which the IC1 uses uh, is divided by 8. So if you want faster frequencies, don't divide the clock by 8. So that's essentially my capture. Capture 1, as you saw on the interrupt, divided by 39. And it's just simple. This is if I get the capture, if it's greater than 450, less than 600. Gives me my minute start, and I'll just put the delay so you could see it. Then into string, so integer to string. Capture 1, result text, and that's giving us the result. That's turning on port A. So lat A, so latch A is capture 1 result of that goes to port A. I've got 20 millisecond delay and then all it's doing is writing the result again but in yellow so you can clear the screen and actually see it. And then same there, instead of writing, it was writing in black and then it's writing in yellow so it clears it.